Hey guys, this is Jagan Saini from Tech Tutor. In this video podcast, we'll see how to write a basic J unit using TDD approach, test driven development approach. I'll be using Eclipse IDE for this purpose. Okay, I'm going to create a new Java project. Okay, I'll be using 1.6 JDK 1.6. I would name this project as Calculator. Okay. Say next, and then I would like to have one more source folder for storing my for maintaining my test cases. So I will call this as test finish, and then. Now I would like to add the jar files required for JUnit. So at this point, we need Hamcrest and JUnit 4.11. So I have selected both the jar files, and I'm going to say finish. So this is an empty project as of now. So the source folder doesn't have anything, and the test folder doesn't have any source files. So I'm going to start with the test cases because we are going to follow this test driven development approach i would like to create a package org dot tech tutor dot calculator okay i'm going to say finish now i'm going to create a class or test case j in test case i would call this test case as calculator test all the calculator related test cases would go in there so i'll say finish okay just to ensure that uh, our uh, j unit integration went well so we can just execute and see if this yeah so we are getting a failure so which means that our j unit j unit framework is in action so so far so good so we are good to start with our test case so i'm going to remove this okay so let me explain what i'm going to do with the calculator you can as assume that the calculator uh, class is just going to have an add method which would be able to take two integers or two numbers and then it is going to add and give the result I know this is a very basic example but my intention is to explain the TDD approach using J unit. Okay, I'm going to name the uh, test function as test underscore add two numbers, maybe two, two positive numbers. So this particular test function can be as descriptive as possible. And this particular naming convention is not recommended for production code. It is only recommended for the test cases. Because just by looking at the test case function name, one should be able to predict what is this test case all about. Right? So this can be even it can look like a sentence, no big deal. So I'm going to say test add two positive numbers. Okay. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to create such a class called calculator. If you notice, while writing test cases, we are incrementally designing the calculator. So I'm assuming that I'm going to create a class called calculator and I'm trying to instantiate the calculator class at this point. I'm done. Now I'm going to see if uh, the results, I mean, if I add two numbers, whether it is providing me the right expected output. Okay, I'm going to declare integer result or I will say actual result. I'm going to say obj calculator dot add. I'm going to supply two numbers like 100 and 200. Okay. Now, JUnit supports a 
function called assert equals which can be used to compare the expected result with the actual result. So the expected result here is 300 comma the actual result. This particular assert equals would pass if both the values matches. If they don't match, the test case will fail. If the test case passes, we would get a green bar over here. Okay. Let me save the test case. Now, if you notice, we have not written any code yet except the test case. Right. So if you notice, this calculator class is not even recognized because we have not implemented the calculator class yet. Now, I am just going to imagine the few more test cases. So, how you write a test case is by using the annotation at test. I am going to say public void test. All the test case function starts with a test, this one. This is not a, can, this is not a mandatory stuff from the JUnit point of view, but as a good practice, it is a good idea to name your function starting with this so that everyone would follow this convention and it is easy to locate a test case. I'm going to see add two negative integers, negative numbers, right? Okay, and you can add the test cases like this and over here maybe we can try supplying two negative numbers and the expected result is this okay now let's see what if if somebody provides two maximum max integer values test add two max integers integer numbers now this particular function gives us some insight that TDD approach not only allows us to test the test our code it also gives a feedback about our design for instance in this particular test case I kind of assumed that the input is always going to be an integer. This worked good, this assumption went well for these two scenarios. But now I'm just I'm just going to try a scenario where if the input is integer dot max value. I'm going to supply the same value here. Okay. So at this point, our assumption seems to go wrong. What assumption went wrong is, based on the, these two inputs, I kind of assumed that the result is also going to be an integer. But an integer variable will be able to hold a value which is of max value. It cannot hold anything beyond that. So when we try to add max value plus integer dot max value. Now it is going to go beyond the capability capacity of the actual result. So which is going to lead to issues, right? So obviously our result cannot be integer. So that's what this kind of indicates. So now we know that our result cannot be integer at all right so now let me change this to new long so this is the benefit of uh, following tdd because when we have not written the code yet we kind of start thinking from the client point of view or the end user point of view who is going to consume this api so our imagination is wide open so we would be able to 
think of all possible inputs before we actually start writing our code. That way our code becomes more robust. Okay. So I'm going to declare a long here. I'm going to say expected result equals I'm going to say new long integer dot max value plus I'm going to do the same stuff here. long okay I'm going to give this expected result over here yeah so this is the expectation so we have added three different test cases so far so if you notice the calculator class is still not recognized because we have not implemented the calculator class yet I'm going to implement it now and uh, I'm going to change this to the source folder. Okay. Finish. If you notice, the calculator class is recognized now and still it is an empty class. It is a dummy class with no methods. And at this point, the add method is not recognized. So now I'm going to add the method I would like to make this as a long let me pass a null here okay yeah so so what we need to do is I need to change these stuffs because when we wrote, when we thought of this particular scenario, we realized that the add method is not supposed to take an integer because it is possible that somebody may provide a value which may go beyond the size of integer, right? So I'm going to give, of course, the end result. I'm talking about the end result. New long this and new long this one. And the result would be yet another long. Okay. I'm going to say new long. Yes. Very good. And I'm going to change uh, this particular stuff, uh, test case as well. Okay. I'm going to say new long. new long okay I would say long expected result equals new long hundred plus new long two hundred expected result. So at this point all our test cases are compiling. Now let's save and I would like to show this code it. So we have not implemented the code yet, just that we have a method signature. So that's the reason I, I said we are incrementally designing our class while we are writing test cases. Okay, so all our test cases are executed, but none of them are none of them have, have passed. Okay, so we see a red. So in fact, I think uh, two failures and then there is one error. Let's see what is the error. Okay, this is supposed to be long. 
object. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, all our test cases are compiling and everything seems to fail. If you notice, the actual error scenario is that assert error expected minus 300 but was null because our default implementation seems to return null. So now if you are satisfied with the test cases, now we can go ahead and then implement the actual code, right? actual logic. So we can say return long1 plus long2. Yeah, now we have tested these three scenarios. So ideally in production, ideally we have to think of all possible test cases and then we have to proceed with the actual coding. So now this is a good demonstration of how to follow TDD approach, test driven development approach using Java JUnit. If you like this video, you can subscribe to this so that you can get notified for more such videos. Thank you.